Today's topic is one of these. And what this is, to be precise, is a transformer delay power soft start protection board. Whilst that title is that the Chinese seller has given you, it is not actually that. What it is, in fact, is purely a soft start. In other words, the power comes in and is limited in its current availability for a predetermined time. If the amplifier has been damaged or blown up or anything like that, it will not protect your speakers. It's purely designed to limit inrush current on a fairly powerful amplifier. This represents a very crude drawing of a surge limiter or current limiter. And it's simply this. The mains power goes in here. There is a resistor here. And there's a switch across the resistor. And the idea being when the power first comes on, this resistor is in circuit and limits the current that is capable of being drawn by the transformer. Obviously, you can't leave it in that situation because that resistor will start getting very hot and the output voltage will be somewhat limited and will reduce the output power of your amplifier. So you have a switch across it. And usually the resistor is in circuit for one to say three seconds. It doesn't need to be any longer than that. Now, amazingly, there's actually a circuit diagram available for this little module. Let's have a quick look at the circuit. It's designed for 220, 240 volts. It comes in for a fuse, which is rated at one amp, and it then comes to this capacitive dropper. And unlike most circuits, where literally you could just have one capacitor here, and there's also a bleeding, <laughs> sounds terrible, doesn't it? A bleeder resistor, which stops you getting a shock if you touch the terminals after the thing's been turned off. And it's a nicely rated one watt, uh, mainly for the voltage, you, you, it would naturally be dissipating one watt, but it's good that it's been done. It means that they've actually considered what the circuit's all about. So the lower voltage comes off here, and there's a limiting, well, there's two limiting resistors, again in series, which is good. They're three watt ratings, and it's, it's just good. I must admit, I'm quite impressed with this little circuit. Then we have a full wave bridge rectifier with the standard 4001 diodes, which again, we're not drawing millions of amps, so those diodes um, are very common and good little diodes. So we have DC coming off here, and it's smoothed by this capacitor. And again, reasonably well rated, there's, there's, there's only about 20 odd volts at this stage so the capacitor there is fine and all we have left very basically is a timer and it provides the delay for the relay coming in after you switch the power on and here we have the obligatory LED I'll show you all this working shortly with the 2k current limiting resistor this diode here is simply to quench any back EMF um, coming from the relay because obviously it's an inductor and when you switch it on or off it could produce a spike which could damage the LED, damage the transistors so that's what it's for and there isn't much to say about this it's just a very simple um, circuit and it's just the timer. When the relay pulls in it shorts out these four big resistors. Now this is what provides the current limiting. Again, there's four in series, partly to dissipate the power, and again, partly because you have got mains voltage across them. Don't be tempted to use this on a switch mode power supply. And they often have 
their own surge protection. So this is purely for transformers. It's quite well made. Um, soldering is reasonably good. What we have here is the input and if you recall the circuit diagram it then goes through the fuse. These are the two inrush current resistors in series. Here is the four diode bridge rectifier, main smoothing capacitor and here we have the three capacitors in series which actually drops the mains voltage and here is the bleeder resistor across those to stop you getting a shock. Here are the two transistors which form the timing circuit. Here is the little LED that glows. Don't know what colour that is yet, I haven't actually applied power yet but we shall soon see. And somewhere there's another little diode which is probably that one across the relay. Here are the actual four current resisting resistors and it's nice to see that they are stood off the board and they have ceramic insulators to actually stand them off the board because these will dissipate all the power that the limiting circuit is providing. They are purely designed to be on for that three or so seconds and during that time they will get well, well we'll check this they will get moderately warm but certainly they wouldn't be in circuit if they were left in circuit for a long time they'd get very hot this is the relay itself and it shows the contacts rated at 10 amps at 250 volts AC just a quick look at the back of the board and you can see the current carrying conductors are somewhat wider they're not thicker and I would probably suggest that those are reinforced with wire this is our test setup I've got the quick test here and I shall remotely switch the power on rather than closing the trap here mainly because I'm a coward and I don't like to be near things that are switched on for the first time. We've got live and neutral and this is the output here. I haven't got anything connected to the output at this stage but keep an eye on the LED which I'm about to apply power for the first time so right powers on mm, this will keep like a nothing happening oh well the relay is now in and the obligatory LED is on as soon as the LED comes on that's when you've come out of current limiting so I think from memory it was about four seconds which is nice at this stage the only thing that's powered up is the basic circuitry none of those current resistors are limiting anymore and obviously when you turn the power off it will instantly just shut off which it does the LED goes out slowly because obviously that's looking at what's left on the supply but the relay did drop out instantly now you do need to be careful with this because the whole board is potentially live um, some of it's got full mains on it which you, you, you don't want to touch that but none of the circuitry is actually isolated as such the low voltage side via these um, capacitors you might get a bit of a poke off that but I, I'm not going to touch it so if you want to touch it that's up to you now it's been running now for about 10-15 minutes and I've just switched the power off and had a quick feel round now obviously the main power resistors aren't going to get hot because I don't have a load on at the moment but these two resistors here do get almost too hot to touch and these are the resistors that get hot 87 degrees now to me that's hot you 
couldn't touch that with your finger. And when I've tested this previously, I got nearly 100 degrees centigrade. It makes the capacitors warm, not surprisingly, because it's so close. And initially I thought the capacitors are getting hot. I thought, no, but that is cause for an alarm. It's going to discolor the board and burn it. So what do I think of this? It does work and it seems to work well, but I have you're not surprised to know some reservations and the main reservation is the fact that those two resistors that I pointed out run very very hot and as the board as the, they do the, the resistors are stood off from the board but only just and I don't know why there's, there's actually a hundred and seven volts drop across those two resistors and uh, that's a, that's a lot i think i'd like to see it designed in a different way that doesn't use a capacitive dropper that uses one of those little modules that produce 12 volts at about three watts they're pennies they cost pennies to, to use but it would make this more expensive but you wouldn't have all this wasted heat and heat and electronics is never good.